Okay, so let's go try another video with the help of the mallet, Thomas the Tank, set square, pen, some sort of tape, and Stormbreaker. Right. I'll try and get that. Okay. So, today's lesson, um, talking about corrosion of metals. We're going to talk about oxidation, rusting, tarnishing, electroplating, and sacrificial protection. So, first point we're going to do is... Recall that oxidation of metals results in corrosion. Um, pretty straightforward. Oxidation means adding oxygen. It's got another meaning. It means losing electrons, but we'll talk about that. That's for another day. Um, so the most simple definition of oxidation, adding oxygen. So oxidation of metals results in corrosion. So if we have iron and we add some oxygen, iron plus oxygen makes... Iron oxide, also known as rust. So we've added oxygen, it's corroded the metal. Um, could be the same for any metal. So if we had lead, lead plus oxygen goes to lead oxide. So oxidation is adding oxygen. Adding oxygen to metals results in corrosion. Um, so it would be the same if you if we do that for a chemical equation instead. So if we had copper, Cu, plus oxygen, which is O2, goes to copper oxide. You don't need to know all of these oxides, but you do need to be able to balance the equation if they give it to you. So if they said copper oxide is CuO, how do you balance that equation? Well, you've got two oxygens there, so you need two oxygens over this side. So we had a big two. So then oxygens are fine, but now we've got two coppers, so we need... Two copies over there. Um, I'll do one more. So if they said oxidation of iron produces iron oxide, which is Fe2O3, if you had to write a balanced equation for that, so you know you're going to start with iron, which is Fe, you know you're going to start with oxygen, which is O2, now we need to balance that one. So how do we balance a 2 and a 3? Well, we put big 2 there, big 3 there. So Three lots of two is six oxygens. Two lots of three is six oxygens. Now we just need to do the ions. So we've got two lots of two ions, so we've got four. So we need four over there. Okay, so that's that point done. Recall that oxidation of metals results in corrosion. So oxidation is adding oxygen. Uh, add oxygen to metals, corrodes them. Special case is rusting. Now, this is really common term, everyday language. Lots of people will say something's rusted or that is rusting or look how that metal has rusted. Rust is iron oxide. So iron is the only thing that rusts. So iron is the only metal that will rust. It is totally acceptable to say that iron has corroded. It is totally acceptable to say that copper has corroded or the aluminium is corroded or lead is corroded but only iron rusts so loads and loads of different metals corrode but only iron rusts rusting is the is the special name for the corrosion of iron and that leads us on to the next point so 5.3 Explain how rusting of iron can be prevented by exclusion of oxygen, exclusion of water, and sacrificial protection. So, iron needs oxygen and water to rust. Because um, you've got Fe plus O2 goes to Fe2O3. Bounce that again. Three, two, four. So, you can, if you can exclude, so exclude means keep out. If you can keep out the oxygen or keep out the water, we'll look at point C later. If you can keep out the oxygen or keep out the water, then you can stop the iron from rusting. And there's loads of ways to do that. Um, loads of ways you see in everyday life. So paint is a really good one. If you paint something that's made of iron, the paint acts as a barrier. Paint keeps out oxygen, paint keeps out water. So don't have any of this. And so you don't get any iron oxide, so your iron stays 
nice and strong. Um, so that's why people paint iron railings or paint iron gates or why bikes and cars are painted because um, steel is mostly made of iron as well. So steel will rust if it's scratched. That's why if you if a car gets scratched, you can uh, you've scratched away the paint which is provided in the layer of protection so the paint doesn't keep out the oxygen or water anymore and then the iron underneath can start to rust um okay uh, it's the same reason why you would oil the chain of your bike um because the chain of your bike is predominantly made of iron so if it's got oil on it yes the oil acts as a lubricant and reduces the friction which is why you don't paint a bike chain it's why you oil it but the oil stops the chain from rusting because it acts as a barrier and keeps out uh, the water and oxygen. The last one is sacrificial protection. If you make a sacrifice, it means you're giving something up, right? So sacrificial protection is you sacrifice something, you give something up to offer a form of protection. And in that case, you just what you sacrifice is a more reactive metal. I'm not sure how well this will turn out. Hopefully it's okay. So this is the bottom of a massive, huge ship. So some sort of um, cargo ship or something, I imagine. And so the ship's made of steel, but you can see here, here and here, what you've got bolted on there is probably zinc, massive blocks of zinc. Zinc's, zinc is more reactive than the iron that the ship's made of. Because metals are conductors of electricity, so that it doesn't matter that the whole ship isn't plated in this zinc. We'll talk about that later on. But what will happen to these blocks is they will react first. So the iron that's in the the iron will not oxidize, the iron will not rust, but these blocks of zinc will slowly react away, and then every so often, like once every six months or twelve months or however long, when all of these blocks of zinc have slowly oxidized away, turned to zinc oxide. You take it to the shipyard, lift it out of the water and bolt some fresh ones on. So you are sacrificing the zinc to protect the iron. Um, so as an example, this is supposed to be a boat. So um, let's give it a propeller. Yeah, there we go. Right. So we've got a boat which is made of iron, FE. We've got blocks of zinc underneath it and then what happens is the because the zinc is more reactive it reacts before any of the boat does so the zinc gradually reacts corrodes away to make zinc oxide and then as long as there's even a little bit of zinc left you take this to the docks lift the boat out of the water take off all the zinc oxide and bolt some fresh zinc blocks to it and you're good to go again Okay, so moving on. So now we're going to talk about tarnishing versus corroding. If something corrodes, it means it continues to oxidise over time and the metal becomes weaker and weaker and weaker. So I've got a couple of examples to show. So this is a car. The car's rusted here. Remember, rusting is just a, the special name for when iron corrodes or steel corrodes. Um, so what's happened here is, and another example there so over time the iron that's in the steel has corroded it's become weaker and weaker and weaker and you've ended up with holes in the metal now that's corrosion and comparing that to tarnishing so the reason that that happens so we've got our lovely block of iron and then let's say the top is, so we've got air here, and this is a block of iron. And then so the top starts to corrode, rust, turns into iron oxide, and then iron oxide flakes away. So the rust kind of flakes away. Lovely fancy animations here. So the rust flakes away. And then when the rust all flakes away, so we've got rusty bits. And that's exposed fresh iron. And then this starts to rust and flake away. And then, and then it exposes more iron. And then that rusts and flakes away. And then you end up with 
deeper and deeper hole in the metal, the metal becomes weaker and weaker and weaker because there's less iron there and the iron's been replaced with iron oxide or, you know, insert metal of choice. Whatever metal, that corrosion just keeps happening and happening over time, undermining the strength of the metal, making it weaker and weaker and weaker. So if that's corroding, what's tarnishing? So tarnishing is where you get a surface layer that oxidizes. So if we go with aluminium, Aluminium's much more reactive than iron, but corrosion doesn't affect it in the same way. So it starts to corrode. It starts to corrode much, much quicker than the iron does. But instead of the iron oxide, the rust flaking away and exposing more iron, what you get is a layer of aluminium oxide. And aluminium oxide is hard, durable. It's like it's coating. Remember we talked about earlier on how can we stop iron from rusting we can keep out oxygen or keep out water and so we paint it to give it like a barrier well aluminium makes its own barrier so the aluminium reacts really quickly with the oxygen makes aluminium oxide but that aluminium oxide acts like a really really strong barrier prevents more of the aluminium from corroding and then let's say um, the aluminium thing gets damaged or someone scratches it so okay we've scratched it we've exposed more aluminium but then that just reacts and makes more aluminium oxide but it's a hard barrier it's pr preventing it from corroding further so tarnishing is a really thin surface layer of metal oxide that actually ends up protecting what's underneath. And if you look at the Statue of Liberty, right, the Statue of Liberty is made of copper. So when the Statue of Liberty was brand new, it would have looked sort of like, like that traditional copper color, like that bronzy, you know, pinky color. And then it's gone green because it has tarnished. It's not carried on corroding. Statue of Liberty is not about to fall down, but it has tarnished and given it that green color because of the, it's tarnished and produced the, the copper's tarnished and produced the copper salt so tarnishing thin layer of metal oxide on the surface corroding more and more of the metal corrodes over time and weakens it and weakens it and weakens it okay and oh, this is annoying. right and final part of the video today final part of the video today explain how electroplating can be used to improve the appearance and or the resistance to corrosion of metal objects so electroplating is um a way you use electrolysis and again that's for another lesson but you use electrolysis to coat a metal with an, another metal so you take something that's made of steel or any metal you want and you electroplate it to cover it with another metal of your choice. So sometimes it's done to for superficial reasons to improve the appearance, or sometimes it's done to improve the resistance to corrosion. Because if you, again, remember from earlier, how can you stop things from corroding? You can keep out oxygen or keep out water. So as an example, um, so chrome gets used for a lot of car parts. So we've got fancy chrome bumpers. Now chrome's quite expensive metal. Um, also, I'm not sure how strong it is compared to steel, but so the bumper's made of steel, which obviously got iron in it. So the bumper would corrode and rust over time, but instead you electroplate it with a really, really thin layer of chrome. So you get your nice shiny mirror finish. So it improves the appearance and it stops it from rusting. Um, it's another one on like the old 1950s style American cars, like fancy, super shiny mirror finish. Um, or on fancy motorbikes and things like that. So it improves the appearance, but also acts as a barrier to stop it rusting. Um, do it on all kinds of things. So as an example, someone has spent a lot of money gold plating an iPhone 4S, which obviously was pretty good at the time, but now the phone's really old and 
not particularly useful, but it is gold plated. Or if you've got a couple of million quid spare, gold plated car or gold plated AK 47. Right. Um, you might have some oh taps. So that tap, gold plated in chrome, stops it from corroding because obviously bathrooms, a lot of water, a lot of moisture, stops from corroding. Also looks nice, shiny mirror finish. Um, or gold cable. So in some high end or more expensive like audio or visual equipment. So you've got those cables or gold plated HDMI cables. So most of the cables made of copper. Copper is a better electrical conductor than gold. Copper will give you a better signal, better image, better sound, because it conducts more electricity. Um, it's got a lower resistance, but copper does slightly tarnish over time. So if you're leaving the cables not connected, the ends of the cables are exposed to the air, which means the ends of the cables could slightly tarnish, which means instead of it being pure copper, the end of the cable would have a thin layer of copper oxide. That wouldn't conduct electricity as well, so you wouldn't get as good a signal. So what people do in the fancy expensive cables, the ends of them, not the entire length of the cable, just the exposed end is coated and well, electroplated with a really thin layer of gold. Um, the gold is unreactive, so it will not corrode at all. So it means the connector will always have pure metal, good connection. The disadvantage is gold isn't as good a conductor as copper. So gold is, it means gold's still a good conductor. Gold is the third best conductor, copper's the best. So the advantage of the gold is it doesn't react, so it doesn't tarnish over time, so you always get a good current. The disadvantage, other than the cost, which is one of them, the other disadvantage is you are not getting as good a, um, you don't get as good a conductor as you would with copper. Um, although you don't get as good a conduct, the reason you do it, you don't get as good a connection as you would with copper, but that connection will always be nine out of 10 brilliant. Whereas your copper connection might start off as 10 out of 10, but if the cable gets older, that tarnishes over time, and then you might end up with a five, six, seven out of 10 connection. Whereas the copper was always a nine out of 10. Um, those scale out of 10 was just for explanation. That was not something you'd ever write down in an answer. So the, co the, the gold, always maintains a high conductivity whereas the copper starts off super high amazing but then will tarnish and will have less over time right and finally for today galvanizing versus tin plating these are two specific types of electroplating galvanizing is when you coat something in zinc and tin, tin plating is when you coat something in tin so Electroplating with zinc is called galvanizing. Electroplating with tin is just tin plating. Um, galvanizing is really, really good for two reasons. So you're coating something with zinc, and zinc's actually quite reactive, um, or, or more reactive than iron is. So if you coat iron, if you galvanize iron by coating it with zinc, you are keeping out oxygen, you are keeping out water, so the iron will not react. But also, you are doing sacrificial protection so you're actually doing all three of these you're keeping out the oxygen you're keeping out water and it's coated with zinc which is more reactive than the iron so you'll have some sacrificial protection as well so if the zinc coating did get damaged um, it wouldn't matter because the iron underneath wouldn't react anyway because whilst there's oxygen and water getting in it wouldn't react because you'd have some sacrificial protection going on now tin plating um, where you coat something with tin so that's protecting the iron by keeping out oxygen and water but actually it doesn't do sacrificial protection the sacrificial protection works the other way because tin is less reactive than iron so if you coat something with tin it keeps out oxygen and water which is great but it does not do the sacrificial protection in fact even if you have a tiny scratch in it um, where any of the iron is exposed, the iron will start to rust before the tin, the sacrificial protection would work backwards. Um, and that's why 
people advise you not to buy dented food cans, right? So when we talk about, oh, it's tinned food, it's um, or it's a tin of food, it's the cans are made of steel, mostly iron, right? But they are plated with tin. So when you have these dents in the cans, I don't know why I'm showing you pictures of dented food cans because I'm pretty sure you know what they look like. But when you've got a dented food can, um, the dent in it might have exposed some of the iron underneath. And then instead of the tin keeping the oxygen and water out and meaning the iron won't react, the some of the iron might be exposed that would start to rust and flake away and then the bits underneath would rust and flake away and you can end up with a small you might not even notice it but very very small hole in the can which might let some air in there might let some bacteria in there so then the food inside could have been exposed to bacteria and air but you wouldn't have necessarily known it because it might still appear that the can is sealed um that doesn't mean if you drop a can on the floor and dent it that you shouldn't eat it because like that's going to be fine. But I'm talking if there's a dented can in a supermarket, that might have been on the shelf for quite a long time, long enough for the iron to rust and let oxygen and bacteria into the can and spoil the food. Or it might have even happened at the factory where it was made six months ago or something. So that's why dented cans could be dangerous. Okay, um, hopefully that's cleared everything up. Sorry for the waffle. Sorry for the terrible camera angle. Sorry for my awful recording equipment. Um, hope you're all safe and well. Thanks. Bye.